Time to pull up a chair. We've got another great story for you today in the R Lounge. Today on R Lounge, we've got the poster child for aimless adolescents whose idea of a productive day involves more gaming than a Twitch marathon. And then there's his girlfriend, an overachiever whose ambition could power a small country. Talk about a match made in, well, somewhere. My 42 female son, Brian, 19 male, has been dating his girlfriend, Shay, who is 18 years old, for about three years now. For context, while I love my son, I must admit that he hasn't turned out to be the person I hoped he would be. He lacks a strong work ethic and has no motivation to go get a job or attend college, instead choosing to spend most of his time gaming and partying. On the other hand, Shay is the complete opposite. She is dedicated to her studies and aspires to become a doctor. She is also an excellent swimmer and she's a part of all of these extracurricular teams and is currently attending her first year of college about two hours from us. When they first started dating in high school, they were a perfect match. We enjoyed having Shay around and my son even took better care of himself. However, ever since she's gone to college, things have quickly deteriorated since then. Although I know my son still loves Shay, he neglects her and doesn't give her the attention she deserves. I feel as though it has something to do with her going to college. He chose not to. That was his decision. We didn't push him in that direction, but seeing Shay thrive in that environment seemed to highlight his own shortcomings. It seemed like he noticed it himself. So my husband and I never bothered to say anything. He became resentful, spending more and more time locked in his room, lost in a world of fantasy games that offered him the thrill and success he lacked in reality. I was home one day from work and as I passed by his closed door, I overheard him on a call with Shay. His voice was strained, almost pleading, as he tried to explain away his absence and lack of effort in their relationship. Honestly, my heart ached for both of them, for Shay, who deserved so much more, and for my son who seemed trapped in a cycle of self-pity and denial. With Shay's obvious potential, I can't help but feel that she deserves someone better. Well, a few days after that, I saw a car pull up in the driveway and he ran out to the car. Well, I thought it was Shay and so I came out to greet her because I hadn't seen her in some time and I didn't think my son would mind. But as I approached the car, my son starts yelling at me and telling me to go back inside. So I stop in my tracks and I'm like, I just want to say hi to Shay. And then he tells me to get back inside now. And I'm like, hold on a second here. No need to yell. And so I go back inside, thinking that maybe I was disturbing some heart to heart, or maybe they were having a fight. And then I'm creeping through the window and he leans down and kisses this person, but I can't see who it is, but I'm having the sneaking suspicion that it's not Shay. So I keep watching. And after about 20 minutes, he leans down and kisses this person again. And he stands at the end of the driveway while the car backs up. And then the car is finally at an angle that I can see inside and this woman is not Shay. Well, my heart breaks and I'm enraged. What the hell is this boy doing? Do I say something? What do I do? So then he comes inside and I pretend that I'm reading on my iPad and he goes into the kitchen and I ask how Shay is doing and he said she's fine. And I said, I didn't know she was in town. And he goes, that was just a buddy from school. And I said, oh, you should have invited them inside. I would have made lunch. And he goes, they were just coming to drop something off quick. Then that night, while my husband and I are in bed, I'm telling him what I saw and he says to stay out of it. He said it's none of my business. But then I say we failed our son if he's someone who cheats. And I say where did he learn that from? And my husband says, certainly not us. And then I say I don't think I can. How can we know something and not tell Lily? That would be like us not helping our daughter if we knew she was in trouble. He says to stay out of it. He says it's just a natural way of things. It's like getting in the way of the cycle of life. Well, no. I wasn't having that. During Shay's recent visit, she seemed distressed. I asked my son to go and pick up some stuff at the corner store for dinner. I told him that I had forgotten something, but I didn't. I just wanted a few minutes with Shay alone and couldn't tell him that. I took the opportunity to ask her what was wrong. Shay and I have always had a good relationship and she's asked me out for little dates, just the two of us every now and again. So it wasn't strange for her for me to pick up on something that was off and then feel as though that I had to ask her about it. She confided in me that she didn't know what to do about my son's lack of ambition and laziness. I told her that I couldn't see it changing anytime soon as it had been going on for almost two years now, but it got worse when she had actually left for college. As soon as she made up her mind about going, I feel as though that's when something clicked at him. She then asked for my advice and I suggested that she prioritize her own wants and needs. She had told me that she was planning on dropping out and coming back home and working at her grandpa's flooring store. I asked her if that was something her grandpa wanted to do and if it was something that needed to be done in order to keep the store afloat. She said no, her grandpa was fine with the store, but she said that school was just hard and it was hard to be away from Brian 
and she couldn't focus properly because her and Brian were constantly fighting. She worked her butt off for a scholarship, and I told her she would be making a mistake if she dropped out of school and didn't give it more of a chance. She deserved someone who could match her passion and drive, someone who would support and uplift her in her journey towards becoming a doctor. But as much as I sympathized with Shay, I also couldn't shake the maternal instinct to protect my son. He was lost and struggling, drowning in his own insecurities and fears, but I tried to give her the same advice that I would give any girlfriend of mine. Honestly, I see myself in Shay. Why would I let someone hold me back like that? And I do think of Shay as a daughter. And as a daughter, why would I let anyone hold my daughter back from her full potential? Then I told her that it's not worth staying with someone who holds her back. I said now is the time for her to be selfish. Shay hugged me and thanked me and said she would consider my words carefully. My son came downstairs earlier today, furious, absolutely in a rage because Shay had broken up with him through a text message. He told me that she mentioned discussions with your mom, which made her rethink the relationship. And she has to put herself first and she has dreams and goals and he's just not matching her energy. She basically told him that she deserves better. My son was angry that I had interfered and accused me of crossing boundaries. I explained that I didn't all out tell Shay to leave him, but simply reminded her to make her own decisions and do what is best for herself. Now my son is not speaking to me and my husband is frustrated, thinking that without Shay, my son will have a harder time getting out of his current rut. I also miss having Shay around. So am I the a-hole? First off, we've got Brian, the epitome of the not quite what I hoped for son gaming and wasting his days away while his girlfriend Shay is out there conquering the world with her ambition and drive. Classic case of opposites attract, until they don't. Then comes the bombshell, catching Brian in the act with someone who definitely isn't Shay. Cue the gasps and the internal screaming. I can practically feel the tension through the screen. But wait, there's more. Mom decides to channel her inner detective and confront Brian about the shenanigans, while dear old dad plays the role of can literally care less. Talk about a family dynamic worthy of its own reality show. One thing's for sure. This family makes the Kardashians look like amateurs. Update. Well, a few days after the breakup, my son comes up to my husband and I, and he says that he found a course at the local college here and that he wants to take. It's a digital media program for game design. This is the first time he's shown any interest in doing something with himself, so my husband and I sort of jump at this opportunity and show our support. He asks for an advance of $5,000 for the program, and he says he's going to pay us back because he has a plan to find a job and pay his way through school. Whoa, who is this kid? He's done a total 360, or so I thought. Well, my husband and I gave him the cash so long as he promised to use it for school. If he got certain grades, he wouldn't have to pay us back. It would be our little gift for him. So he acts all happy and makes all these promises. About a week later, he brought that girl I saw in the car over for dinner. My husband is acting like nothing has happened. He's chatting with her and asking her questions and my son is just sitting at the table with a big smile on his face. Then I notice this ring on her finger. Then I feel sick to my stomach. I feel like he's brought this girl over and he's doing this to me on purpose because of the conversation I had with Lily and I hope to hell that this ring isn't what I think it is. Well, two can play at this game. As dinner went on, I observed the new girl my son brought home closely. She was polite and engaging in conversation with my husband, but something about her demeanor seemed off to me. I noticed how she would subtly touch my son's arm or lean in closer to him when she spoke, and it made my blood boil. It was as if she was marking her territory right in front of me. Well, I wasn't about to let that slide. After dessert, when my husband excused himself to check on something outside, I took the opportunity to confront my son and his new companion. With my steely gaze, I locked eyes with the girl and asked her bluntly, that's a pretty ring. She looked taken aback by my directness, but quickly regained her composure. She replied with a sweet smile, Brian proposed to me just yesterday and we wanted to tell you tonight. Her words sounded rehearsed and I could see right through her facade. I'm shocked. I look at Brian and I'm like, how did you afford that? Who even is she? You only just broke up with Lily. And the young lady looks confused and looks at him and then looks at me and then back at him. Then he straight up tells me to go F myself and he gets up from the table and urges her to follow him and then I lose it. And I tell him that he can't speak to me that way. And again, I say, how did he afford that ring? And I'm like, you bought that with the money we gave you for the program that you lied to us about, didn't you? And he starts laughing. And then I'm like, what's so funny about this, Brian? We told you what the money was supposed to be used for. And he goes, yeah, I'll pay you back. And I say to this young lady to give me that ring because I'm taking it back. And she looks at Brian and Brian tells me to hell with that. And he says that they're leaving. And I'm like, yeah, you should leave. And you're no longer allowed under this roof. And I'm giving him until the end of the month to either pay us back for that money or give us that ring. The girl's eyes widened in shock at my outburst. And my son's face turned red with anger. He opened his mouth to protest, but I held up a hand to silence him. 
I mean it, I said. And then he again tells me to go F myself. And then I tell him to get out of the house. And I tell him he can't go around treating women the way he is because he, clearly this young lady doesn't know about Shay. And then he throws my crystal vase at me before he slams the front door. And I open the front door back open and I tell him I'm calling the cops. And if he tries to come back here, I'm calling the cops. And he can spend some time in jail figuring out who the hell he is and getting a grip on reality. Then my husband comes in and asks what the hell happened and what he missed. And I explain and he then yells at me and tells me that I took it way too far and should have stayed out of it. And I ask him if he's proud of his son who just sits in his room without any motivation or any drive to do anything with his life and then suddenly asks us for money and buys a random girl a ring out of nowhere. And he says it's not up to him. And I said, he's your son. You should care about what he does and you should want him to do something with himself and not just play video games all day and treat women like trash. What is going on here? Am I living in the twilight zone? It's like your son decided to skip the how to adult 101 class and went straight for the advanced course in chaos theory. From wanting to be the next digital media mogul to proposing with a ring bought with borrowed bucks. He's definitely keeping you on your toes. And that girl? She's either auditioning for the role of Stepford fiance or she's got a master's degree in manipulation. Who knew dinner could turn into a reality show showdown? Update. Well, I left my husband. Turns out I was sort of projecting and I realized that if I'm telling Shay to go and live out her dreams, then maybe I should take more of my own advice. It started when my son broke into our house a few days after the dreaded dinner. He thought that I wasn't home because usually I'm out volunteering, but I happened to be home that day because I wasn't feeling well. I came down the stairs to see him swiping money from my wallet and trying to take his father's credit card. Well, I called the cops like I said it would. Then my husband is screaming at me and at the cops while our son is getting arrested. I told him that I can't go back on my word. Our son has to learn right from wrong. I said if he's going to sit on his butt, then he can sit on his butt in jail. So that was going down, and then quite literally the next day, I have to use my husband's computer to find some paperwork when an email comes in and it's in response to a job he applied for. I'm like, what am I reading? He's supposed to have a cushiony job as a chiropractor in a clinic he's been in for 15 years. Well, then I decided to go through his emails. Get off back. So, what I see is back and forth from his lawyer and previous employer. I guess his business partner wanted him out because my husband wasn't performing as he should and the clinic was in trouble because of it. Well, they figured out a way to let him go, and now he's in this lawsuit with him, and he's jobless. Not only that, he's been digging into our investments in order to pay bills. All of this without letting me know. He's gone during the day as if he would be leaving to work, so I don't know where he's been going. Anyway, I realized that in my efforts to guide Shay and protect her from settling for less than she deserved, I had neglected to do the same for myself and my own happiness. I hadn't realized just how unhappy I was in my own marriage until I saw how my son was treating Shay. So I kicked my husband out as well and I'm out there living my best life. Did I take it too far? I don't know, you tell me. I just know I would have liked someone to look out for me like I did for Shay. At least she's not going to be trapped in a loveless marriage like I was. A little background info. My father passed when my husband and I were still young and newly married and he passed on the house that we were living in to me. We've been in it and made it our own ever since, but the house itself is mine. I've found my lawyer and we'll have it figured out, but I plan on taking him for all he has, whatever he has left. As for my son, I had never bailed him out and I froze the accounts so that my husband didn't have the cash to do it either. He might still be in there learning his lesson. First up, we've got mom, the queen bee of tough love, dishing out justice like it's going out of style. I mean, who needs a superhero when you've got a mom ready to call the cops on her own flesh and blood for swiping a few bills? Talk about laying down the law. Mom's not just the hero of the story, she's also the master of self-discovery. Who knew a little family drama could lead to such profound revelations? From neglected marriage to newfound independence, it's like a midlife crisis in HD. As for the house, well, it's become the battleground for the ultimate showdown, mom versus dad, with the prize being, well, everything. Who will emerge victorious in this epic battle of wills? Only divorce lawyer will tell. What do you think? Did OP take it too far? Was OP in the wrong? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. And thanks for joining us today. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click that notification bell before you leave. We'd love to hear your thoughts on today's topic, so feel free to leave a comment. See you next time in the R Lounge.